Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, we have a fire on a cruise ship that injured three crew members trying to put the fire out. We have the Netherlands finally deciding, hey, uh, you know what? We better develop some protocols for all these protesters who are interrupting the cruise itineraries and ships and costing money and closing ports, etc. We have a cruise ship that passengers were ashore when they got a warning on their phones and emails and from the ship horn saying, you better get to the ship early because we have to leave because the hurricane is approaching and causing severe weather. Yeah, and uh, then we have some good news. MSC Cruise Line has developed a new way to have fresher food delivered to the cruise ships, as well as Princess Cruise Lines is gonna give you just, well, probably a few more reasons that you might want to upgrade your package to Princess Premier. It's kind of a good deal, I think, and I think you might be excited by it. A cruise ship known as the Adora Mediterranea used to be known as the Costa Mediterranea when the cruise line Adora Cruise Lines purchased it, was in left China and was on its way to Japan, had a fire on board. Apparently the fire broke out, it looks like in the engine room. Luckily the sprinkler system kicked in right away, put the fire out pretty much uh, as quickly as can be expected. And when some crew members went to open the, the fire door, apparently a big plume of black smoke and everything kind of just out the door. And uh, they, were, they had to be treated for smoke inhalation. The ship is uh, now delayed, leaving its next port and everything because they have to now inspect the ship, make sure it's safe. The passengers were evacuated from the cruise ship just to be uh, cautious while the Coast Guard and everything were making sure everybody was okay and the ship was safe, they're inspecting it now. It appears it should be able to leave again very, very soon. Good news is the, the men are all, no passengers were injured. The men uh, appear to be okay. One was transported to hospital, but is expected to make a full recovery as well. So yeah, it uh, looks like the cruise line did a really good job of making sure everybody was safe, as well as the Coast Guard even set up an emergency hospital little tent area right there at the cruise port in case any passengers or more crew members needed further assistance. Luckily, it was not needed in this case. So good on Adora Cruise Lines and good on the, on the, on the Coast Guard and everything up in Japan and China for making sure everybody remains safe during this emergency. Speaking of emergency, we had the Car uh, Carnival Magic was visiting Turks and Caicos yesterday uh, when everybody was ashore and uh, they started getting text messages and emails and suddenly the, the, the ship's horn started ringing as well. Well, if you're ever in a cruise port in the middle of the day or anything for any reason, and it's not in the, like the emergency horn, like the long, the three beeps and then the long beep that says abandoned ship. If it is just like, like that, the cruise horn, that usually means the ship is getting ready to leave. And in this case, they had decided that because of the hurricane approaching, it is now a hurricane, no longer a tropical storm or nesto, that they had better pack up and leave earlier because of deteriorating conditions that they might not be able to leave if they waited too long. So they moved their time up to 2.30. It really can be a scary situation for passengers out there because not everybody has their phone on out in about in ports. They don't always have international plans. So they turn the, the phone off or they put it on flight mode and they're not gonna get those text messages unless they're in a place with Wi-Fi that they have happens to have hooked up. So yeah, you might not get that call. You might not get the text message and you might be left ashore if you don't get back in time and the ship has to leave for safety reasons and concerns. So that's a really smart idea to remember. If you hear that horn, you better just head back to the ship as soon as possible, or at least inquire to what, why that horn's going off. Next, we have Amsterdam, as I reported out 
they've had uh, Extinction Rebellion has interrupted two different cruise ships and um, has no sign that they're going to slow down in any capacity in the future and basically have gotten off scot-free. There was no charges laid. The police just let them do what they did. There was nothing happened. Nothing at all happened. Meanwhile, it cost the cruise lines thousands of dollars in transportation costs. Thousands of guests were impacted by what happened, that they had to go to a different port, had to be bussed, itineraries were changed, etc., etc. Well, it seems finally that um, they've decided, you know what, we better develop some protocols for this. So, in the, you know, despite these recent developments, we have Dick de Graaf, who is the managing director of the cruise port in Amsterdam, acknowledges that there's a growing trend against cruise tourism especially right now in Amsterdam. But he also says it's pretty funny that these guys are always protesting, yet half the time they get their facts completely wrong. And I've read some of their facts and they, they like to, to change things. For instance, if the cruise ship is small and really doesn't have an impact too much on the environment and is passing the environmental safety things and is LNG fuel, they'll do things like, well, those are the rich people and that's why we don't like them. Only the rich can do it. So they'll change the narrative to fit their protest. Well, they say now they're finally going to develop things and they're in conjunction with the mayor, the police and the courts. So hopefully in the future, when they try and disrupt things like this, there will be some harsher penalties. Uh, because I'm sure some of these folks will probably change the way they protest if there's repercussions. For instance, oh, you, you're going to interrupt something and you're causing thousands of dollars to the cruise lines? Well, they're now allowed to sue you for those thousands of dollars. How does that sound? Or if you can't pay, well, you can make it up with a 30 days in jail. Let's see how many people will take five or six hours out of the day to protest if they know they might go to jail for 30 or 40 days as a, or oh, thousands of dollars. I think the protests will become much less obstructive. Let's just put it that way. Also good news, if you like fresh food on cruise ships, MSC and their sister brand Explorer Journeys has come up with smart containers. Now what these smart containers are is that they keep food at the precise right temperatures and monitor them for the entire journey of where they have to go. For instance, if you have fresh fish, it will be frozen at a certain temperature. They will monitor it while it's in transport and it can go from their warehouse to the ship in 48 hours all under this monitor system. And it will notify them if the temperature changes, if the door accidentally opens on the container, if the there's a processor not working properly and they say they started this in 2023 and they have noticed a vast improvement in the freshness quality of all the food that they have to ship. Now, about 90 to 95 percent of all food on cruise ship is locally sourced. They purchase it in local different areas, but when it does have to be transported, it's good to know that these containers are there to keep it as fresh and monitored as possible. Uh, good, good job MSC. I think that's a, a really good solution and glad to hear that you know food is always an important thing on cruise ships. Thinking, speaking of important things, many of you know Princess has your standard fare and then you can upgrade to Princess Plus which includes a few things, uh, uh, drinks up to a certain limit, one device for your Wi-Fi, um, your, your gym and uh, gratuities, things like that. Well, they also have Princess Premier. And with that, you get two casual dinings, uh, no, unlimited casual dinings, and you get two specialty dining included in that, and your drink's up to $20. But there are still limitations on that package. Well, as of the end of this month, I believe most of those packages will be enhanced. So the Princess Premier, not the Plus, will be changing to the point where you now have the new Medallion Max will be included with Premier, which is the much faster internet service on board. Good, I like, I, enjoy, I like that, that's good for me. They will also now have no limits on your drinks, which means that, not the $20 point, I mean how many drinks you're allowed every day. You're, they're, they're removing the 15 drink limit. You're now, if you can have 16, 17, 20, 25, 
you're, they're not going to allow you to get hammered where you can't walk. But, you know, when you throw in specialty coffees and specialty cocktails that are non-alcoholic and you throw in the alcoholic drinks, you can hit those 15 drinks when you're counting coffees and everything like that as part of those packages. So there, you will no longer have that limit on your drink package. And then probably the most exciting part of the upgrade of that package is unlimited specialty dining available as well. That's right. You can now book. Now, this will not include Spellbound on the Sun or, you know, the, 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 the meals that are like a show and a dinner kind of thing. But Sabatini's, the Crown Grill, Planks, Steamers, all of the specialty restaurants like Hot Pot and all that will be available. And you will now have unlimited, not just two, unlimited. So if you're on like myself and now you're going on a 16 day cruise, if you want to have specialty dining all the time, that might be a very good option for you to go ahead and purchase an upgrade to the premier package. I'm going to give you a heads up. If you're going on these longer cruises and you want to do it, you better be booking those specialty dinings well in advance once premier hits. Because uh, when we were on the 16 day cruise, there were many nights that we had to pick and choose when we could go. And so there was limited availability because people booked those out well in advance. So keep that in mind as well. If you're heading to one of these ships and you have Princess Premier, you're going to be able to have unlimited dining, no limit on your drink, and you're going to get the medallion max. For me, that's pretty exciting news. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think, hey, um, yeah, maybe that extra investment of, you know, $20 a day to go from plus to premier, once you include the specialty dining and the difference in drinks and the max on the internet, maybe that is a substantial benefit to yourself. Let me know in the comments. Do you think it's worth it? And until next time, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel blogs from around the world? Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.